We have an exclusive, it's the first field test of Nightsight's new rangefinder. Jamie has top tips on how to defeat the rabbit's early warning system, roe deer. And in hot air, Nigel Farage stands up for Scottish air gunners. Welcome to Airheads. Night Sight have sent me down. They're all singing, all dancing. Night Sight, which has got an add on laser rangefinder. We've got to be very, very careful with it because it's only an SLA model. It's going to be launched officially at the Northern Shooting Show in May. They're all in full production. The disclaimers and the letters that I've been given if I break it, so we've got to be careful tonight, David, um, because it is an SLA model. But it looks good and it seems to work an absolute treat. That rabbit there, look. One one eight. You know, I think air rifles is really where it's going to come into. You know, where range and trajectory is key to a humane shot. And the range finder is very, very simple to put on. All you do is take off your existing anti-recoil clamp, and the range finder module slip, sits in place. One thing that I've also noticed, it's got an inclinometer, so you can see when the rifle is sat perfectly level, and then when you come down onto your target. You can see we've got seven degrees of, we're shooting seven degrees downhill, which for a lot of people is going to be quite a useful feature. Obviously, the, the steeper the angle, that alters point of impact. We're going through this awful transition between daylight and dusk, but you can see that the rangefinder is on scan mode, so you can actually see the infrared beam of the rangefinder. Slightly off centre, but like I've explained many times, this is just an SLA model, so we know we're exactly 36 metres to that tree. And whilst David and I have been waiting for the light to go, we've just pinged a couple of targets with this, and I've got my Zeiss range finding binoculars. Um, we're getting no disparity, no errors at all coming off this range finder. You can see here this is in scan mode. So we've got the horse stables there, 147, 146 metres away. So then if something came tracking in, and all of a sudden down to the fence line in front of us, is only 51, so you're not having to keep constantly pressing a button. You can just track anything that you want. So if you've got a fox or a rabbit that started running across the field, you know instantly 51 metres base of that post. 147 metres to the shed. Simple. Yeah, that just goes to prove a point. Yeah, look, 42 metres on the range finder. I wouldn't have had a clue whether that was 30 metres or 50 metres. One of the questions David just asked me, just out of interest, because we can see the visible flash of the laser when I'm aiming at these rabbits. You can see I've got a rabbit here, 66 metres, so too far for a sub 12 foot pound air rifle. But the um, laser is invisible, so there's no red glow whatsoever, so you're not going to disturb your quarry at all. That can't see the laser flashing at all. So again, you can clearly see, you know, by having that range finder on there, straight in the eye. I will hold my hands up, shooting a 12 foot pound air rifle is completely different as I spend most of my time on the back of a centrefire and do a lot of rabbit control with FAC air. Um, and this just takes you back to basics, yeah, in a really, really good way. One dead rabbit. That was exactly 33 when I shot it. Headshot there and it's just leapt. It's underneath that tree. We'll go pick that one up. 
Okay, find some more. Oh, what a shot to end the night on, Dave. I've got dew drops hanging out the end of my nose, freezing cold fingers, and a 42 meter headshot on another rabbit. Oh yeah, third grown rabbit. Another nice headshot, which is great. Is that a wrap? <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. Is that a wrap? Thank you, Darren. One less excuse for missing in the dark. Now someone who has no excuse. It's David with Hot Air. This is Hot Air. The first political party to make a positive statement about air guns is UKIP. Nigel Farage launched his Scottish manifesto with a commitment to repeal the new air gun licensing system, calling them an important tool for pest control which provide affordable sport for people wanting to take up target shooting. He added the level of crime involving air guns is low compared to other forms of crime and does not justify a licensing system. Spring means kick-off for the competition season. The HFT Masters was in Cambridge with our own Roger Late coming joint top with 55, but a shoot-off put him second to Dan Measures with Vince Holland third. The next round of the HFT Masters will be at the Northern Shooting Show, which is on the 7th and 8th of May, where Roger promises to stretch it out for the team warm-up session. Staying with competitions, and it's the opening of the BFTA Championships in Wales. In a weekend of mixed weather, Justin Wood became the 2016 BFTA champion with an excellent score of 37. Simon Higgins took second place and Dave Schofield third, all of them air arm shooters. For more, go to the BFTA.net. BSA's wider than standard scope mount dovetails have led to the launch of some new mounts. Top manufacturer Sportsmatch has added a 30mm medium height scope mount to its range. It also fits early Virac HW35s and CZ452 American rimfire rifles. Price is $35.95. Visit sportsmatch-uk.com. The Benjamin Pioneer Airbow has arrived in Australia, but there are problems. It fires arrows with compressed air, so is it a bow or an air gun? Australian Bow Hunters Association spokesman Bruce Kelleher says we wouldn't have it in our association. Wherever you're watching this, you can win $500 for voting for your favourite air gun products. The Game and Fish Annual Awards for Best Products is based on online votes at readersurvey.org forward slash hunting gear. And finally, the Crosman factory in the USA had to be evacuated after what looked like a chemical cloud hit the building. Firefighters think a chemical reaction was to blame, but they are waiting for reports from the hazmat team. None of the four Crosman employees were hurt. These pictures are from local station Wham News. You are now to date with Hot Air, aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Now, a ferreter went after these next rabbits and only got one. Surely that can't be hard for Jamie Chandler to beat. The rabbits have got themselves an early warning system. The Americans use AWACs, rabbits use roe deer. This wheat field is a favourite grazing spot for both species, big and small. The deer numbers here are up to around 16 animals and they are far better at spotting an air gunner than the rabbits. It's like they're the guardians of rabbit paradise. And what I'm going to have to do is work out a way around them. Now, I've tried lying there prone and hoping that they'll just sort of breeze past me. But as soon as they're within sort of 30 yards, especially if they're upwind of me, they're smelling me, they're away like there's no tomorrow. Some of you keen-eyed viewers may have noticed that Jamie's BSA Scorpion SE is sporting a new look. As you can see, the affair's going very, very well. I've even gone and bought her a couple of gifts, a new dress and some new new glasses. The reason I changed the stock, or BSA sent me a new stock, is simply because obviously for me, with the whole digity thing, um, it's rather difficult to walk around without having a, a shoulder thing, and I didn't want to ruin the beautiful oak one. Don't know whether it's any better looking, kind of jury stood out on the whole, you know, is it better looking thing, but far more, far more grippy for me, to be honest with you. So it's a bit sort of pragmatism over beauty. I'd love to have the wooden stock on here, but with the sling swivels 
and a slightly more grippy stock, it means I can obviously get more satisfaction out of using the gun, or at least more accuracy out of it. Jamie makes it safely past the deer. His ruse is working. But is the ting pat of the air gun going to spook both roe and rabbits? The deer don't seem to mind so much. It's the impact of the pellet, which is what I was hoping, which is causing them to dash off and then come back in again. But that, that's absolutely fine. Because if the rabbits see the deer there, they don't see a predator, which is great news for me. In these windy conditions, some of you may not even grab your air gun as the first choice, but they do have their advantages. The guy who comes up here, uh, great guy, really nice bloke, comes up here with a with his powder burners or whatever you want to call them, fires a load of shots off, and he finds along this ridge difficult simply because as soon as he's had one shot, the rabbits aren't daft, they run for cover, they're not coming back up again, they are really, really switchy. With, with an air gun and with this wind and with the deer around providing confidence, we're, we're able to actually bag more than someone with a 17 HMR. <laughs> It's certainly been a test for Jamie, but he's saving your breakfast Weetabix one bunny at a time. Good work by Jamie. Now from Hampshire to the wider world of air gunning on YouTube, it is air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here, this is my roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Fenland Air Gunner is out after rabbits. He makes the case for scouting out your ground before you set up. Air Gun Web TV new episode goes back to basics, hunting with gamo brake barrel air guns. Rick and Cecil are after quail and rabbits in the Arizona desert. There are a number of dove species that can be hunted in South Africa all year round with no bag limit. Air Arms Hunting SA is out after Cape Turtle Doves and Laughing Doves with his FX Impact. Air Gun Hunter Extreme Channel is back at the farm on pest control duty. This is the USA and those ground squirrels can't breed fast enough. Next up, the redoubtable, nay ineffable shooting sports magazine editor Peter Moore, with whom I served at Arras and Bloemfontein, at least in our heads, reviews the CO2-powered SIG MPX for Gunmart TV. Tech Tips Now, Air Gun Academy episode 39, How to Lubricate Spring Gun, is part of Pyramid Air's excellent air gun maintenance series. Less useful but more fascinating, Newtown Naughty Boy sends me this form of how he strips down a vintage Diana Model 27 from the 1920s to replace a leather washer and gain a little more power. We end on bigger game. Benjamin Marauder 25 Air Rifle Turkey Hunt Spring 2016 is exactly that, as Glenn Elliott guides Don Reed of DGS Air Guns in Sacramento and films him dropping a 10-inch bearded Northern California gobbler. That should get some hits. Links to watch the videos are in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for air streaming, ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this episode. We're back in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching and goodbye.